good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all our speakers, chairs, and the wonderful audiences in different parts of the world. Welcome back to ACNS webinars. The speaker for the first session of today is our honorable guest from China, Professor Guan Shang. Professor Shang is a professor and director of neurointervention department at the first affiliated hospital of Changchao University, China. He is also the chairman of the professional committee of neurointervention of Radiology Credit Society of the Chinese Medical Association. He heads the neurointervention branch of the Henan Stroke Society as well as the Henan Provincial Interventional Therapy Professional Committee. He is a noted author with over uh, 170 publications and he is a member of the editorial board of the Journal of Chinese Medicine, Journal of Chinese Intervention Radiology. We are extremely honored to have him today at our webinars and today we will be talking about endovascular therapy for aneurysms in, in which he will, he will talk about focus on neck to achieve cure. The speaker for the second session of today is our honored guest from India, Dr. Kamlesh Baisora. Dr. Baisura is an associate professor in the Department of Neurosurgery at the Sanjay Gandhi Postgraduate Institute of Medical Sciences, Lucknow, India. He did a short term endovascular fellowship from the University of South Carolina, USA. And he is a noted author with over 100 publications, and he was also the past assistant editor of Neurology India. We are extremely honored to have him today at our webinars, and today we will be talking about incidence and management of iatrogenic aneurysms. The chair for the first session of today is our distinguished senior faculty from Japan, Professor Shigeru Miyachi. Professor Miyachi is the chairman and professor of neurological surgery as well as director of neuroendovascular therapy, Aichi Medical University, Japan. He is the president of the Japanese Society of Neuroendovascular Therapy as well as the Asia Australasia Federation of Interventional Therapeutic Neuroradiology. We are extremely grateful to him for accepting our invitation to chair the first session of today's webinar. The chair for the second session of today's webinar is an honored guest from Taiwan, Professor Jimmy Ming Cheng Chuang. Professor Jimmy is the Chief of Division of Brain Tumor and Department of Neurosurgery at the Kaohsiung Changgang Memorial Hospital. He was a previous fellow with Professor Ali Chris of the Arkansas Institute, USA. We are extremely grateful to him for accepting our invitation to chair the session of Dr. Kamlesh Baisora. On behalf of the Education Committee of the ACNS and the President, Professor Yoko Kato, I would like to welcome both the speakers, chairs, and the wonderful audiences to this online platform of ACNS webinars. A very warm welcome to our colleagues in China, and we are extremely grateful to Professor Shubin for broadcasting this webinar on the WeChat channel. Dr. Liu Boon Seng from Malaysia is my co-host for today. And with that introduction, I would like to hand over this online podium to our first chair, Professor Shigeru Miyachi. It's a great honor for me to chair this, this uh, very wonderful uh, seminar. Uh, Professor Guan Sheng, and his uh, title of lecture is on treatment of aneurysm with focus on neck to achieve cure. It is a very important issue uh, to the to embrace the aneurysm. So, uh, I, I start with it. Okay, to Guan Sheng. Okay, good night and afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm very glad to be here again to take part in the webinar. And uh, today, we'd like to. Uh, discuss with you about the uh, interventional treatment of intracranial aneurysm. Okay, this is my topic. Uh, it's about uh, the interventional intracranial aneurysm uh, treatment. If we focus on the neck, a uh, large part of the energy would be cured. Uh, <clears throat> as we know, under the condition of local arthritis and or continuous blood flow shock, the normal blood vessel wall may bulge into a aneurysm neck and the sac. The aneurysm uh, may be ruptured or stable, will depend on the speed uh, of the process uh, progress. Uh, for stable aneurysm, if it would develop or recurrence after intervention will depend on the hemodynamic on neck and wall. About the healing after operation, uh, it is because of the crack of abnormal flood flow and reinforced west wall and uh, Intimal carve the neck again at last. And uh, so many uh, classical intervention methods uh, could obtain the result, namely in intimal carving on neck after interventional treatment, such as the calling single 
or blue assist calling or uh, stern assist calling. So many uh, methods could uh, achieve effectively and uh, constantly uh, correction of the abnormal blood flow on neck. Just like the this uh, middle-sized uh, energies as in the uh, ophthalmic uh, seg segmental of international of internal carotid artery uh, with coils single six months later and uh, eighteen months later demonstrate the cure of the aneurysm. As such. Small size to narrow neck, actually only calling, we can form the, the effective diverter on the neck from the sac. But as we, uh, many specialists uh, have the experience about the recurrence after single calling, just like this case show. Uh, even we, uh, feel the coils tighten density uh, in the sac, but only leave the small space, namely the top, the tip of the microcaster. But uh, six months later, DSA demonstrated recurrence. But for this case, I'm very clear, it's on the, it is because of the uh, soft coils and the smaller size, just the packing in the sac. Uh, because this method could not provide uh, stable support from neck to the to the uh, from the sac to the neck, so the recurrence is inevitably. Plus the uh, the 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 blood flow directly into the sac, and uh, another uh, middle-sized uh, aneurysm. Stay assisted in calling, but uh, leave the space of the inflow zone. This area could not uh, then stay calling. So, so six months later, the aneurysm recovery. Even, namely, even with stay assistant, stand assistant. But if we could not achieve dense packing on the area of the floor, the recurrence will occur. It is because the blood flow, blood flow in the inflow zone uh, could not correct it. And there's another uh, huge or large aneurysm as in the segmental seven of the internal carotid artery. Uh, this case was then uh, uh, just uh, uh, the Elvis was start to use in our clinical practice. At that time, we hoped the two Elvis overlapped implanted could achieve the uh, effective of the fluid of water. So for this case, we just uh, uh, call in the sac uh, loosely and uh, with two areas overlapped cover the neck. And we hope we that method could cure this uh, aneurysm because it's very early, it's uh, uh, 2014. But uh, unfortunately, three months later, uh, the aneurysm uh, or recovery. So for these three cases, uh, we can we could see the key to cure intracranial aneurysm is how to cover neck with coils, stand or, or whatever other devices effectively and stably. It's the key to cure the aneurysm. As we know, uh, many methods or almost all the internal uh, interventional method would achieve such a result, for, such as for calling singly in sac, but we have to cover the neck from the sac 
to cover the neck with the first coil, namely framing the whole aneurysm, especially cover the neck, not only to fill the sac and the levers in the neck. Even under the state, state, uh, assisted or blown or stain, we also focus on the neck with coils, namely cover the whole uh, aneurysm, including the sac and the neck. For modern methods, uh, flow water, such as flow water in partner artery, it is because the metal cover rate is in is enough, depend on the uh, flow on neck. Namely, if uh, the neck lies on the uh, great curve and uh, with a jet line, maybe one for the water is not enough. S under such condition, we maybe have to use multiple for the water. So if the sac uh, diameter is plus uh, 20 millimeter, maybe three or four for the water could achieve the uh, metal cow rate enough. For intracellular fluid water, uh, nowadays it's become a, another hot point in interventional radiology because it could uh, provide stable support from the sac, but whether web or counter, it has poor uh, comorbidity on neck. Uh, for the cover stain in parent artery, uh, it's a special device and uh, could achieve uh, 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 good results because it can isolate the blood flow uh, on neck and uh, especially uh, for the narrow neck and uh, for the straight segmental. But the indication is very thick and very na narrow. Maybe a device in the future uh, could aim to aneurysm neck covering. Uh, nowadays, maybe such as the North List or the Medina or whatever others. Firstly, let's see some uh, cost simple or we stand to cure the aneurysm. Just uh, I have mentioned, the first uh, uh, si uh, coils is very important. Our experience is to choose a larger size of the first coil, whether it's a uh, two divergent or three divergent, to form uh, insect and neck. Uh, this method could be better than insect first and then neck. Especially for the aneurysm, the shape of the aneurysm is uh, strip-like. Strip Namely, it has a obvious neck. Uh, in order to achieve such uh, good results, a single uh, microcast or double microcast or blue assistant uh, is necessary sometimes. It will depend on the aneurysm, depend on the patient's anatomy and the operator experience. Uh, even with field uh, for calling singular, uh, we could uh, use the stain as the compensation. But at that time, uh, we have enough coils on neck. So, and uh, the coils can uh, have the tighten contact with the stain. So the occlusion rate could uh, increase. Uh, it's uh, just like this. Uh, it's a uh, uh, middle-sized aneurysm lies in the a tip of the basic artery, and uh, uh, this is a Moya Moya disease patient. And uh, with 
their first coil, larger sized coil, to frame the sac and uh, cover the neck, and another microcast to fill the the sac. Only three coils, which you are such kind of uh, okay. Uh, it's the last. Uh, uh, it's a uh, angiography uh, immediately after the operation, and uh, six months later, this uh, aneurysm was cured. It's another uh, middle-sized aneurysm lies in the ophthalmic uh, segmental of the internal carotid artery, and because the wider neck under uh, Maybe now, nowadays, especially for young uh, intervention doctor, they would like to use a fluid of water or stay assist calling at least. But uh, for me, with uh, only uh, one microcaster and uh, three coils, we achieved a, a good result. Uh, just like you see the uh, the size of the aneurysm was five by six, but I choose the first coil is a seven for twenty, the second is six for twenty. It's the uh, angiography right after the operation, and the six months later you can see this aneurysm was cured without stereo system and the fluid of water. Uh, it's another uh, ruptured aneurysm lies in the segmental seven and the wide neck and the uh, irregular shape. Uh, for in my department, uh, many young doctors think uh, this uh, aneurysm could not treat uh, if uh, without uh, stereo system. But uh, we, I used uh, uh, two microcaster and uh, uh, larger coils to frame uh, from the neck to the from the sac to the neck, and uh, it's the uh, angio right after the operation. And uh, 17 months later, actually, this uh, aneurysm was cured. Sometimes uh, calling. Um, Singly uh, is very difficult, just like this. And uh, whether I uh, shaped the tip of the microcaster into three uh, types of the shape, but uh, failed. So I choose the blue system to form the, the coils and uh, leave the orifice of the of ceramic artery. And the one month, uh, one years later, the cure, the, the aneurysm was cured. It's another uh, irregular aneurysm. So if we focus on the neck, we can use the a larger first call, whether it's a two dimension or three dimension. And uh, I will always uh, leave the tip of the microcaster uh, just a. Uh, uh, on the neck or near the neck, actually in the parent artery, and to frame the first coil. Uh, even I could not uh, form the satisfied uh, frame on the neck, but uh, assisted uh, by assisted by Stan, I used only two coils, namely the larger uh, framing coil and uh, second only mm, filled the neck tightly. So two coils achieved a, a good result. For such condition, I have no doubt about the uh, occlusion of this aneurysm. So for wider neck, absolutely, uh, such a procedure can achieve the a result, namely the coil with close contact with stain on neck, and it can obviously improve the result of the uh, occlusion. 
But for fusion form aneurysm, uh, I, I'd like to suggest to uh, the flow that water with loose coils inside. These coils, uh, not only to uh, improve the, the thrombus formation, but also uh, to provide support to the flow of water. And it could shorten the occlusion time. Uh, this is the segmental four of the vertebral artery and the wide neck. So assist the calling. We focus on the neck. So we use the larger size coils and from the Titan uh, uh, calling on the neck. You can see so many calls contact closely with the stem. So this aneurysm was cured. Nowadays we can use uh, flow that water because uh, uh, flow that water can achieve the enough uh, metal uh, carry rate easily only with uh, Stem. But uh, uh, before the uh, uh, flow the water application in clinical practice, we use the uh, coil assistant multiple uh, stem to achieve such kind of results. And uh, usually, the first coil, uh, the size will depend on the from the top of the sac to the parent artery, namely the larger size than the sac. You can see the uh, good result and the long-term result. Uh, let's review the, the last, uh, the former case. It's a recurrent uh, of the aneurysm treated by the C-assist calling. And because we were very clear the reason of the recurrence. So uh, through the coil, through the stain, we uh, coil the inflow zone with more large coils. And uh, it's the right after angiography, after the second operation. And uh, 48 months later, uh, follow up, demonstrate no recurrence. And the seven years later, the aneurysm was also occluded. So it's another type, uh, just as I mentioned, a larger sac uh, lies on the uh, grid curve. And uh, there is a, a jet line, all, uh, obviously. So only coils, uh, stay assist coils, uh, is uh, easy recurrent. But if we choose the larger size of coils and uh, frame the coil from the um, sac to the neck and plus the the, the, the stains, namely so many coils uh, close contact with stain it can uh, improve the uh, occlusion rate, just like this one. And uh, seven months follow-up demonstrate it cured. And uh, two years later, no recurrence. But uh, if, we couldn't, if we don't do that, just like this, it's also uh, 2014. And that just like you, you can see the first coil is smaller than the sac. Even we uh, uh, in, implant so many coils on the neck at last and assisted by stent, it's the uh, right after the operation, it's not it's not uh, so tightened on the neck. Six months later, it demonstrates recurrent. It is because the so many coils, so if the size of the coil 
is smaller, so it could not uh, provide stable support. So it could be uh, compacted, compressed. So 22 months later, uh, it uh, recovered again. So that's what you have seen uh, happened if framing on neck with uh, first coil, larger coils. If we don't do that, it's easy uh, recovery. Uh, for cover stand or stain graft, uh, I have uh, gave my lecture before on other inter international uh, conference. Because uh, this kind of uh, stain graft nowadays are only available in China, uh, namely Venice cover stain. For this case, uh, we decided to use the Venice to cure this uh, aneurysm. Namely, we use the uh, Willis uh, through the uh, stain, the first uh, stain, because the Willis, you know, is the uh, balloon mounted. So it can uh, make a dilation on the neck. So we, could, uh, we don't uh, worry about the uh, contact of the first gun and uh, with uh, Willis. Stain graft is right after the operation. It isolated the, the blood flow into the sac. And uh, 30 months later, no recurrence, no restenosis in stent. So for this case, we can more clear about the key point to kill uh, aneurysm, especially the hemodynamic related aneurysm is to correct or isolate the abnormal blood flow on neck. For carcin, it can provide an instant and a constant uh, a correct of the abnormal blood flow on neck. It's another case uh, uh, almost like the, uh, the former one. Uh, first time, uh, only coils, but uh, the, the sac is too large and the cause is not as large as the, uh, the size and the leave the neck so it uh, recurring. And the second time they use the uh, stay assist calling, they filled in the more coils on the neck, but it's still recurrent after the second operation. So when the patient come to me, I choose the Vedis to rescue the, the recurrence. And it's right after the operation and uh, five months later, the, the uh, aneurysm was cured. So for fluid water to cure the aneurysm, because it can corrupt a uh, normal blood flow on neck from parent artery gradually, especially uh, for those patients are uh, not proper for carsten. I would like you to uh, choose a fluid of water. Uh, for fluid of water, it can achieve uh, effectively and constantly uh, diversion on neck with single fluid of water for majority aneurysm. But for some uh, special type, such as a superclinoid, uh, a huge sac, narrow neck, and a jet line on neck. Maybe we have to choose a staged or multiple fluid waters, or fluid water plus vitis, namely carvestan. Uh, for ruptured aneurysm, such as the blood list aneurysm, and uh, some jet line, a special type, 
uh, we have to combine the flow of water with coils on neck. Namely, we to do a patch on the neck outside the for the water, just on the neck, uh, just on the neck. For fusiform, huge energy, uh, no doubt, for the water will be the first choice because for the waters, uh, whether a uh, tactical or overlap can restrict the, the parent artery, especially with coils. Just like this, uh, coils with uh, for the water. So for this case, uh, if we uh, don't use coils in the sac, uh, maybe this aneurysm could be cured, but uh, maybe three years later. But plus coils, three or six months later, it uh, cured. Namely, the uh, cure time will be shortened, obviously. It's another uh, blood bleed aneurysm. It's an old lady. And uh, 10 days later, uh, we see the uh, aneurysm. Because 10 days before, the first uh, angiography, they could not see the uh, sac. And for BBA, uh, we have many methods. For this case, actually, we can choose the car stand directly. But uh, at that time, we, we have no uh, videos available. So we choose uh, coils, fill the uh, sac first. But uh, our purpose is not to fill the coils in the sac. Actually, we focus on the neck. So uh, with fluid water assisted, we are uh, calling the neck at last. This is the last uh, uh, vessel CT and the angiography. The patient uh, was good till now. The BBA was cured. And at the early stage of the flow of water application, uh, for such kind of uh, aneurysm, namely lies on the grid curl uh, with a large sac and the jet line obviously on the neck. So almost all the operators worry about the uh, re-bleeding after the uh, peri uh, operation. So in order to uh, get rid of or avoid such complications, uh, we choose two for the water overlapped, cover the neck and the plus coils in the sac, especially, especially on the influence zone with uh, coils close test uh, contact with the for the water. So for this uh, difficult, uh, tough case, we have three months uh, occlusion after operation and uh, 12 months follow up, no recurrence, no stenosis. Uh, for segment of four, uh, dissection aneurysm, no doubt uh, coils flow with fluid water or fluid water only is the first cause, is, is the first choice, because a good result could achieve. For such a kind of tough case, no doubt, cause assisted uh, multi fluid water will be the first choice. And only six months follow up, it, it uh, was cured. Uh, I uh, read many uh, references of the paper. Uh, many authors think this kind of uh, aneurysm, even treated with for the water, it uh, occluded very, very late, maybe three to four 
yes or five years later. But if we use coils plus uh, multiple uh, for the water, just as you see, only six months it has been cured and the 12 months is okay. So even on the area of the water for the uh, intracranial aneurysm, uh, we can ignore sac, but we should pay attention to neck. So uh, for every aneurysm, we should ask for ourselves if single flow of water is enough for it. What kind of aneurysm need more flow of waters or have to combine coils or even two of them are not enough. Just like the superclanoid, or narrow neck, or jet neck, huge sac, such special type, maybe one fluid water, two fluid water, or even with coils in the sac, not enough. So maybe uh, we have to choose another uh, method, just like I have mentioned, the twins, uh, namely a fluid water uh, plus various in it. Now there's uh, many uh, intracellular fluid water uh, have achieved a good result because it can provide stable support from neck, uh, from sac to neck, such as a uh, media, a uh, web lunar counter and a uh, uh, mesh coil, uh, homemade uh, domestic products. Uh, just like the counter, uh, this demonstrate uh, it can or ignore the large part of the sac only uh, focus on the neck. It can cure the aneurysm just for this large uh, sac, but only implanted the counter on the neck. It can cure this uh, aneurysm. It's another case only with uh, control. Uh, from the uh, one third of the sac to provide the support uh, and uh, the counter can correct the flow, the uh, abnormal flow on the neck. So other uh, devices uh, could consider such as the picaners, picamers or pulse rider it's also focused on the uh, neck, but uh, some have to combine with coils or other method. But for pecan verse, uh, it, it is uh, with a member on the tip of the uh, stain. And uh, uh, other uh, devices such as uh, Eclipse is also focused on the neck. And the uh, Nautilus, namely with the first coil, only uh, uh, introduce it in the neck and the plus coils, it can cure uh, good results. It's the case, I uh, published the paper with the first uh, uh, Nautilus and the plus coils, the anyways was cured. Okay. Uh, uh, after this years, uh, especially with the application of stent and the flow of water, I think we sh if we can focus on neck again, many ideas could have changed and the many uh, strategies could be adjusted and the efficacy could improve. Uh, for such kind of uh, idea, I think maybe new devices could be nurtured. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Professor. This is a very impressed and very wonderful lecture. So, so we open the discussion. Do you have a, a question or a comments from the audience? So far we have none. It's my cause. Ben, would you like to ask, Ben? Yes. Yeah, please, please. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Ben. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Professor uh, Kwan-Sung, uh, for your lectures. And I can see 
that uh, the endovascular techniques is quite advanced in your center. I can see that uh, you use uh, four, uh, four directors and also calling to treat uh, those uh, giant aneurysm. So may I ask, uh, because for this giant aneurysm, uh, some uh, patient would present up with a cranial left uh, palsies. So what is your experience uh, for the outcome for cranial left palsies in giant aneurysm uh, treated with a uh, full directors and uh, uh, coiling? So uh, will they uh, get worse or similar or will they improve after the surgery? And do you need to give uh, steroids for these uh, patients uh, with um, uh, cranial left palsies? And yeah. sorry, you, you referred to the observed segmental artery? Uh, I mean, uh, I can see that from your cases, you have some uh, giant aneurysms mm -hmm. treated with uh, full diverters and coil links. Mm -hmm. So uh, my question is that for these patients, uh, uh, do they have uh, cranial left uh, palsies? And uh, so in your experience, what are the outcomes uh, for those patients uh, with cranial left palsies uh, with giant aneurysm uh, treated with a full director and calling? And do you need to give a steroids uh, uh, if you consider endovascular treatment? Uh -huh. uh, you, you mentioned the, the symposium after the, uh, before or after the flow of water after treatment, after the uh, clipping. Uh, I have noticed the, the report, uh, they com uh, pair with the, uh, compare the flow of water and the uh, clipping. Uh, the symptoms uh, improved after flow of water, but uh, aggressive after clipping. So for uh, intervention treatment, as we know, even we uh, uh, feel so many calls, uh, but uh, it only uh, accounts for 30% of the set. And uh, with the thrombus uh, formation, uh, the sac actually shrink. So the symptoms could be improved. The symptoms could uh, uh, sometimes disappear. So for my appearance, uh, even with many calls in the sac and uh, with flow of water in the parent artery, the patients have not progressing after treatment. Uh, the results are better than sometimes sleeping. Yeah, yeah, but do you recommend uh, so larger si size of the uh, cores for all, uh, even in the flow divert cases? So very big size core, do you recommend in the pa to pack the pack the aneurysm? Yeah, so his his question will be is uh, such a large core will be so so disturb the shrinkage. And uh, that is a that is a uh, so they disturb the recovery of the cranial nerves. So so how many percentage or do you recommend the, the packing rate for the flow diver? <laughs> <laughs> I have I have mentioned if the size of the sac uh, within the twenty millimeter, yeah. we can use coils with. Uh, uh, more cost and less for the water because you know uh, for the water is very expensive in China. Yes. Uh, yeah. So because we have the uh, size of uh, 25, 25 mm. millimeter. Yeah. So we we have the larger cost, so we can uh, provide a, a framing or a coils carving on the neck. So plus for the water, it can improve the metal carry. So uh, the, the the result will be good, but if the sac diameter is larger than twenty millimeter, even we use twenty five size uh, coils, 
it could yeah. not uh, achieve the uh, coverage on the neck because the sack is so huge. Under such condition, I'd like to use more flow that water, just as like I have mentioned, multiple flow that water. Mm. For 20, larger than 25, uh, the huge any risk, mm. maybe uh, if the mm. neck lies on the great curl and the jet line on the neck, so three, sometimes four full of that water could oh. achieve the uh, mental calorie enough to correct yeah, yeah. the abnormal aneurysm. Yes, yes. Uh, and I have done uh, five cases with mm -hmm. only one flow type water and this, namely domestic cover stem into the flow type water and just cover yeah. the neck mm -hmm. it, and with no coils in the sack. But the uh, sack uh, disappeared uh, six months later. Mm. Yeah, we, we don't know the such a really stand. That means the mainly in China, and uh, we yes. cannot uh, you cannot use it. But that was very attractive. And uh, but in such a case, uh, in the no no flow diver and the first select first choice will be should be the really stand. How, how, yes. do you, how do you think? Yes. So, so if the autonom uh, anatomy is proper, such as the, the diameter of the parental artery and no obvious curve, namely the, the, sac, the neck on the, the street segmental, we can choose uh, Willis directly for first place. Uh, yeah. But mm. if the anatomy is improper, it's mm. like always like uh, on the curve, and uh, you know the Willis uh, is a uh, balloon mounted. Uh, stem. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's not proper for such kind of uh, anatomy uh, structure. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah but that I'm afraid have to choose for that water. Yeah. I'm afraid of a thromboembolic complication of such an covered stent. Do, don't you have an, uh, such an experience in the Willis case? Yes. Uh, so if we uh, uh, use the Willis reluctantly, reluctantly, yeah. such as for improper uh, anatomy structure, uh, yeah. the uh, very uh, serious complication is the uh, proximal fistula. Oh. Um. Uh, now this with um, the application of many uh, media. Uh, uh, caster, it's easy to introduce it on the target zone, mm. but because the de delivery is a uh, balloon dilation, mm. sometimes it could uh, cause a uh, fistula. Mm. Okay, so it's a, thank you. Yeah, yeah, Mohan, do you have a question? Yeah, please okay. yes, introduce yes, yourself. Yes, yeah, and good evening, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Gyeon Sheng. Uh, uh, thank you for the excellent presentation. Uh, I, I have a question for you, but uh, uh, what is your comment on the, uh, uh, what is your comment or recommendation on a broad-based aneurysms with a branch arising from the neck, like in anterior choroidal artery aneurysms or in ophthalmic segment aneurysms, a broad-based aneurysm with a branch arising from the neck? Do you still recommend uh, more coils do you still uh, target the neck, uh, even though uh, branches are rising from the neck? Or uh, what is your, uh, please share your experience. Yeah. Uh, you mean the branch uh, rise from the neck or from the uh, from the sack of aneurysm? It's branch yeah, arising yeah. from the neck. Branches yeah. arising from the neck. Uh, don't worry about that. Okay. Uh, because such as the uh, uh, fatal uh, posterior community artery. So if we only uh, implant one through the water, the sac is always there, even one year or three years. Sometimes it can uh, become bigger. But if we plus some coils and loosen, uh, loosely packing in the sac, uh, we, uh, with the uh, dual antiplatelet medicine, and we uh, have no 
obvious uh, complications of the ischemic stroke. Mm. Okay. Mm. Yeah, but uh, but uh, if you use this oversized uh, cords, so, so I, I, uh, as he said, the if the branch is uh, arising uh, the, from the sack, yes. the such an oversized cord will be so pack the the origin of the neck. I don't know if the branch branch. Don't you have uh, such an the problem? Yes, yes. Uh, we we have considered about it. So if the branch is uh, have important function, mm -hmm. such as the pica, such as the fatal uh, uh, communicant artery, oh, yeah. and uh, mm -hmm. if the sac is not larger, mm -hmm. I would like to choose uh, some uh, stay assist calling, such as the mm -hmm. Elvis or Leo, and with the budgeting technique, and mm -hmm. the orifice of the branch could be uh, protected and with the coils tightening in the sac, this kind of uh, aneurysm could be cured easily. The fluid of water won't be the first choice. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, the branch is uh, such kind of, especially on, on the middle separate artery. If the mm -hmm. superior branch uh, right from the neck or from the sac, uh, uh, especially from the neck, we can use uh, some open cell such as Atlas assisted calling will be the first choice. But if the uh, uh, branch such as the super uh, branch right from the sac, mm. for such kind of condition, we will choose fluid water without coils in the sac. That's good, cool. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? My course, Liu Bun Seng, any questions from you? Yeah, thanks, thanks, uh, Raja. Uh, thanks, Professor, for a very uh, nice uh, uh, lecture. I just want to find out, Prof, how do you decide those uh, you show that a very wide neck and you put a large uh, framing coil uh, at the beginning and, and you does not need a stand uh, to keep the coil inside the sac? And then you also show a case that where you use the balloon assistant. So how do you uh, decide uh, when not to use uh, the assistant either by the uh, stand or by the balloon prop? Oh, uh, I always try to uh, call in singly with one or double microcaster with the larger cars to framing from the sac to the neck. So if I, such as try three times or 30 minutes, okay, uh, I always fail. Under such condition, I could uh, uh, assist uh, with stain or alone. Hmm. In that condition, do you, do you think that uh, if you could uh, coil the aneurysm, white neck aneurysm without a stand is much better than coil aneurysm with stand. Is it that's, that's the reason why you spend 30 minutes uh, without putting a stand uh, for that reason? Is it, Professor? Uh, so, if well, I first try to do that, uh, just like I have showed you, uh, at last actually I used the stand, but uh, with uh, less coils, sometimes one or two coils with stain, and we can achieve high metal covering on the neck, not in the sac, not in the parent artery, but only sac, on, only neck. So the, the result will be better than you uh, choose the stain at first day, stay your sister, calling money coils in the sac, but uh, leave the uh, space, even it's very few space in the sac, in the neck. The result is not as good as the, my, my method. Mm. And one last question, Professor. You also show that uh, you don't depending on the 3D coil, uh, but you also show that earlier you just choose to use 2D coil. 
uh, a framing call what's what's the reason ah uh, as the first uh, beginning uh, first uh, pro, uh, uh, period of my start to neural intervention uh, i will uh, uh, buy with our tutor the first uh, framing coil then a uh, fitting coil uh, then uh, feel the neck but uh, with more uh, experience i really uh, neglect the, the 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 framing or the uh, three dimension or two dimension nowadays i usually like to choose two dimension because of for two dimension i can uh, achieve the different uh, uh, results of the framing for uh, framing coils because the frame the shape is always like a ball but for two dimension i can make it adapted to the shape of the aneurysm whether on the sac and on the neck it's easy to achieve the good result the uh, adaptability is higher than three dimension yeah. coils would, would it be possible sorry to add one more question would it be possible that in your inspiration in the future there will be a 3d three-dimensional coil that more impact at the neck in the future where they create a 3d coil that more coil will be impacted in the neck rather than to form a ball type would, would that be the the future it will depend on the uh, the shape of the mic uh, of the uh, aneurysm so if if the aneurysm have a long neck maybe two dimension will achieve the good coverage of the neck with two dimension but if the shape of the aneurysm is just like a ball maybe larger uh, framing coils will achieve good result it can cover the neck easily so it will depend on the the different type of the aneurysm thank you very much professor thank you thank you well, thank you thank you very much that was, that was a wonderful discussion and we learned a lot from the first lecture i would like yeah. to hear the final remarks from professor shiguru miyachi before we move on yes yes okay, <laughs> okay. yeah this is very very nice discussion and uh, i think uh, uh as he said uh, maybe the, now we tend to select the flow diverter for the so big big aneurysm and uh, also the the with coil or without coil that is maybe the controversial but uh so his uh his lecture will be so suggests uh so very nice uh healing process uh to cover to cover the neck tightly it is a very great concept, and uh, we should uh, we should follow uh, this uh, his policy. You know, thank you very much for the wonderful lecture. Thank you. Well, thank you, thank you very much for the speaker, Professor Guan Sheng, and the chairperson Shigeru Miyachi for this wonderful discussion. I would like to mention that there are nearly four hundred and ninety people who have joined us live from all across the globe to watch this webinar and we're extremely grateful to Professor Shubin for broadcasting this on the WeChat channel. So now we'll move on to the second session. I understand it's too late in Japan. Professor Miyachi, thank you very much for, the, for sharing <laughs> and Professor Gohan Sheng as well. So we'll move on to the second session and I would like to hand over this podium to our second chair, Professor Jimmy Ming Cheng Chuan. Jimmy, all yours. Okay, good day. Thank you for the discussion. Um, I have a five minute slide for introduction to this topic. So I will share on the monitor. So good day, um, Raja, Dr. Ben, and my chairman, Professor Miyachi, and our honor speaker today, Professor Bessera. My name is Jimmy Zhong. I'm coming from Kaohsiung, Taiwan. I'm very honored to have chance to chair, introduce our second topic, Incidents and management of intragenic aneurysm. Intragenic uh, aneurysm in the body is very common, causing a plenty of literature to discuss the treatment workflow. On the other hand, intragenic brain aneurysm are rare and lack of the system review and workflow suggestion. On the definition, 
atrogenic brain aneurysm are usually a result of direct trauma to the arterial wall during various neurosurgical or endovascular procedure. So I will start today's introduction by reviewing the case in the literature. This is a five, 15 years old woman with subarachnoid hemorrhage with diagnosis of the small ACOM aneurysm. The balloon assist coiling of the ACOM aneurysm was performed under general anesthesia. During the procedure, the tip of the Michael wire inserted into the balloon catheter, placed in the left pericarosal artery, caused a local irritation of the inner layer of the vessel wall and vessel constriction over a length of 1.5 millimeter without breathing and with a full disturbance visible in angiogram. The follow-up angiogram performed 12 months later after the procedure and see there's a dissecting aneurysm irregular in shape around 12 plus six millimeter in diameter in the place of the previous facial constriction of the left side pericarosal artery in the A2 segment. After five days of the standard dura anti preparation, a stand assist coring of the peri was performed and angel show a three millimeter long stenosis of the vessel lumen at the level of the aneurysm neck. A little baby stand was implanted into the A2 segment of the pericarosal artery. The second case is the 71 years old female underwent a EVD with hydrocephalus and post-op EVD day 20, a distant right anterior cerebral artery should do aneurysm along the EVD tract rupture, which is successfully treated via clip and the raping. The third case is a 50 years old gentleman who underwent transnasal endoscopic surgery for incidental pituitary macroadenoma. The MI revealed a three centimeter cell lesion just in, in cross of the right cavernous carotid artery and compression of the optic chiasma. The patient tore the procedure well and went home three days later. He had experienced two transient episodes of the massive epistasis. Cerebral angiogram revealed a 3.4 pseudoaneurysm of the left side distal cavernous carotid artery with additional 1.5 pseudoaneurysm on the right cavernous artery. He finally did endovascular curing and successful treatment. The fourth case is a 68 years old who had a history of the tuberous column cell meningioma, operated twice at different hospitals. The first surgery was performed 20 years ago and post-op radio surgery was performed. And then after the recurrence, he had second operation. During the surgery, the brick's arterial breaking coming from the IC was observed. The breaking was controlled with packing. And post of angiogram revealed a pseudo aneurysm in the supraclinal segment of the ICA. And patient was finally treated with ECIC bypass and trapping. So you can see there are more and more atrogenic pseudo aneurysm formation treated with the new pipeline or the bypass surgery. And even in the literature, there's still some um, option that you can just conservative for waiting. So this is a very good topic. And we're welcome today's speaker, Professor Bassara. He will bring us the good topic today, incidence and the management of intragenic aneurysm. Let's welcome. Thank you, Professor. It's an honor uh, to present here. I will thank Dr. Raja and ACNS for giving me the opportunity. And uh, after a very good lecture by Professor from China on management of aneurysm with flow diabetes, now I will take the topic towards some complication. So I'm talking on incidence and management of iatrogenic aneurysm. This is our experience and our protocols. How are we are managing it? I am from Lucknow, India. So, uh, talking on uh, these complications, major vessel injuries during neurosurgery is most dreaded complication. Everybody has faced it once or twice in their uh, career. 
literacy report of incidence of vascular complication complication is around 0.9% in neurosurgery literature but these complications are sparsely reported in, in our literature and uh, after even rare is the incidence of uh, pseudo aneurysm because actual incidence of pseudo aneurysm is not known after a major, major vessel injury so some literature says the iatrogenic aneurysm contribute to less than 1% of all aneurysms and recently due to changing paradigm towards minimally invasive approaches now risk of major vessel major vessel injury in iatrogenic vascular uh, injury and in pseudo aneurysms are more than uh, higher than ever and we should take it all these these things on consideration so as we are going more and more minimally invasive and the proponent of minimally invasive surgeries are uh, always tell this gives improved visualization with endoscope or uh, any other gadgets and they uh, in our proponent they are get greater ability to expose and control on vessels but this extensive skull based procedures and our uh, minimally invasive treatment have higher chances of ic injury or any vessel injury inside the brain so these major vessel injury are usually under reported in, in the literature i have gone through a literature this uh, paper from pittsburgh group they have done one questionnaire study on their fellows and uh, fellows who are coming to attend conferences in their uh, here they uh, have uh, found out that all uh, almost 20% of respondent have had ic injury within last 12 months and each uh, in this study reported that their injury are more happening on more and more on higher uh, the surgeon with a higher uh, number of cases because the surgeon are getting more or more aggressive their approaches maybe and getting more complex surgeries with with more uh, minimally invasive procedures the literature says the open skull based procedure has uh, 3 to 8% of major vessel risk of major vessel injury and standard transperineal approach microscopic approaches have 0.2 to 1.4% of risk of major vessel injury what is reported in the literature but actual incidence of pseudo aneurysms after these major vessel injuries not reported what i find that paracanoid segment is intercanal artery is a most common site for iatrogenic pseudo aneurysms in one of the paper is reported around 27% of all pseudo aneurysms reported till now in the literature so no conscious guideline or label uh, recommendation exist to how to manage this uh, uh, entity at the moment and what are the challenges because uh, these uh, aneurysms comes with some challenges then uh, regular aneurysm we are uh, doing regularly first during the primary surgery judicious control of bleeding we have to save patient first and during uh, the control of bleeding we have to prevent ischemic strokes to the patient and these aneurysms have high rupture rates and high mortality and their management is always complex and multidisciplinary so these are the challenges we should keep in mind managing in these patients uh, now i would like to uh, take to some of our uh, patients when we have uh, managed these pseudo aneurysms the first case is the fifth schonoma it was done endoscopic transperineal transsterigoid uh, uh, excision of the, this tumor the surgery was going very fine we have removed almost all tumor but in the last phase of the study uh, surgery we face the brisk bleeding we know we have injured icm so the salvage process has started by packing and uh, taking control on this bleeding because we are not able to find the leak and we are not confident that we will repair it endoscopically so we packed it immediate post op ct scan shows large hematoma in supracellular region patient was directly wheeled after that into angio su which shows a pseudo aneurysm in right cavernous segment of on cavernous uh, cavernous segment of the ica and on cross flow study the patient found to have a good cross flow from opposite side so and that point we have to take decision what to do so the parent artery occlusion of this patient was done and to occlude that aneurysm patients uh, sustained this procedure very well uh, interestingly she didn't have any post op deficits regarding this uh, parent artery occlusion this was the case number 1 uh, the next case in this patient is a 40 year old male is where that etv gone bad this was his fourth ventricle tumor the this is the 
fourth ventricle tumor and this is an old scan the, when patient was admitted he had gross hydrocephalus so as a uh, primary procedure the patient planned for endoscopic third ventriculostomy but due to third, third ventriculostomy there was a brisk bleeding patient was managed with you know uh, avd and uh, irrigation but how much but patient hemodynamically stabilized and patient taken for angio shoot the ct angio shows a secular aneurysm on basal, on basilar bifurcation similar finding was confirmed on dsa and uh, this patient was underwent coiling of this aneurysm immediately on on the same day on dsa shoot patient had very long post op course stomy course and he is gradually improved to uh, to m6 you know command following position we decided to undergo the primary surgery and the removing the postcoxa tumor as he was improving on day 30 he had again had a rib bleed and and this time we can cannot salvage this uh, child and he uh, succumb to this disease this is a very unfortunate complication a simple procedure like atv and this is the how deadly this aneurysm can be because they have high rupture rates small uh, residual neck or uh may may not uh, may may give a very bad results in the post op course another the, this lady was 45 year old female non functional pituitary adenoma it is a regular endoscopic transpinal case intraoperatively she had small perforator bleeding and which was controlled and uh, she didn't undergo immediate uh, angiography on uh, the, the, uh, this patient on the same day C post op day three and four, uh, C develop epistaxis. For epi evaluation of epistaxis, C undergone the DSA, and the DSA we have found the aneurysm, pseudo aneurysm on uh, uh, medial ductus pseudo aneurysm on ICA, you know, paracanal region. And this patient was managed by in, uh, endovascularly by stunting and coiling. The uh, the outcome of this patient was good. C had didn't had any problem uh, regarding this aneurysm, and C is improving and is still in follow up. next case i would like to show as our center is high volume center for cbg anomaly we regularly do these of complex ad cases and these cases are usually are associated with uh, multiple bony and vascular anomalies at from forum magnum and, and these conditions uh, ideally some can put the vertebral artery in the uh, in dangerous positions during surgery in this case during Uh, stumentation at cbj uh, between c2 putting the c2 screw the the vertebral artery got injured which can be uh, seen here and uh, after controlling the uh, the bleeding the patient was wheeled in the immediately in dsa suit we can see this it makes pseudo aneurysm develop at this uh, 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 vertebral artery and uh, on this case the vertebral artery was co dominant so we have to save this vertebral artery and and most of this was the dominant vertebral artery so this what uh, aneurysm was stunted and occluded from, uh, excluded from circulation and patient did well post operatively now he is still in follow up doing well and another case just uh, similar case but different situation where uh, similar injury happened uh, during this uh, atlantic axial dystrophy surgery but in this case there was a dissecting aneurysm with occluded wall uh, wall or lumen of the artery but in this patient the vertebral artery this injured vertebral artery was non dominant the opposite vertebral artery was uh, very dominant we usually we what we usually see in vertebral artery one artery takes the dominance so parent artery occlusion of this injured artery was taken and patient did well post operatively so uh, uh, the parent artery occlusion did well in this patient that's how the cross flow and dominance of uh, uh, circulation can help in decision making of, of these patient and, and if especially we can uh, 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 categorize these uh, uh, this finding pre operative scans or angiography this can help uh, definitely help post operatively or situation like these uh, if arises in the decision making this our our experience 2012 to 2020 we have have 15 patients who develop the pseudo aneurysms in five uh, patients ic was involved the what nine nine patient vertebral artery was involved in one patient vessel artery was involved 
and the ICA was involved mostly in the uh, patient which are uh, done transplantally uh, like pituitary craniopharyngeoma or fifth nephronoma and uh, are, uh, about morphology the in eight patient they are a pseudo aneurysm in seven patient it they were dissecting aneurysms we managed uh, three patient with endovascular stenting and coiling in five patient perimetral occlusion was done in two patient surgical trapping was done and five patient were managed conservatively in this patient we uh, looked at the vessel is already occluded maybe due to dissect dissecting aneurysm and gradually the vessel got thrombosed but patient was did well because due to uh, adequate cross flow and uh, dominant circulation on opposite side so this patient was managed conservatively with antiplatelet drugs and we have seen this patient all patient are doing well in 11 patients we had a favorable outcome and four patient Uh, in fair patient outcome was unfavorable so look to discuss the uh, risk of bleeding and morphology of aneurysms of these pseudo aneurysm depends on exactly on location of injury whether injury is happened in uh, our major vessel extradurally interdurally or inside the sur sur arachnoid space or any bony canal where this artery is running and mode of injury like is it direct injury like penetrating injury or inside a vessel or inside a bony canal some like which usually happen during screw insertion insertion or any uh, cautery injury so all these uh, morphology and risk of bleeding may depend on all these uh, factors in these patients the iatrogenic aneurysm in subarachnoid space is usually associated with false aneurysm with a high risk of bleeding and poor outcome so if these pseudo aneurysms are develop in subarachnoid space so they want urgent management the treatment of these aneurysm via open surgical clipping or endovascular approach is daunting task as these aneurysm are often wide necked with or without definite neck or large and large and giant in size so uh, regarding pathology usually these aneurysms we develop like a false aneurysm or dissecting aneurysm and it also depends upon mode of injury in a soft penetrating injury the false aneurysm will develop is like the transmural injury develops bleeding and which is gradually clot develops and inside that clot a pseudo aneurysm can develop and like uh, we most of the spine cases at cbj what i have shown you the dissecting type of aneurysm can develop due to uh, you know injury to a partial injury to the wall of the artery and we uh, to uh, jo hatway already told the uh, lo location it depend uh, is high uh, uh, risk or depends on location also so we cannot aneurysms are high rupture, rupture rate extradural aneurysms are usually relatively stable and in bowling canal they are mostly dissecting aneurysms so we can progress so what are the management strategies for these aneurysms first is prevention which is the Uh, uh, <laughs> there is no option uh, uh, regarding prevention it should be our you know primary goal if injury happened then management of primary injury and after the management of primary injury these patient are should be screened for pseudo aneurysm if develops they should be managed appropriately to prevention to first of all any uh, neurosurgical case you know anatomy is very developed very uh, important and knowing a morbid anatomy of these pathologies are because we know uh, normal anatomy and correlating with it that anatomy in a morbid situation like any tumor or any uh, uh, spinal pathology is very important and second most factor is assessment of tumor and patient related factors so how much that tumor has encased or involved that uh, major vessel and any uh, patient related factor like atherosclerosis any collagen vascular diseases so these all these factors uh, uh, takes uh, major vessel into very uh, risk and use of agents when available we should use all agents like navigation uh, angiographies icg whenever possible in our uh, surgeries to locate these arteries uh, you know at uh, during surgery to preserve them and to avoid our you know aggressive resection around these vessels and pre op assessment of dominance cross flow Uh, whenever we think we are ha having any major vessel uh, in in tangle or on your tumor surgery and going going to be in the risky situations we should always assess the dominance and cross flow with angiography if we have more more uh, confidence during our surgery and our planning also 
if anything uh, go, go things go, goes wrong so i regarding the malignant primary injury you know whenever major vessel injury have a, how much confident surgeon is he always needs help you know like the so there's a dictum like two surgeon three and four hand technique always helps and if the small rent and perforate injury we can by, manage by bipolar uh, efficient surgeon can suture it a small rent you can place a aneurysm clip keeping rest the aneurysm uh, the vessel can have stenosis digging the wall of that uh, rent in the clip another option is the parent artery occlusion in desperate situations mm-hmm. saving the patient you have to occlude that artery and last resort is packing with muscle or hemostatic materials to control these bleeding so that further you know management can be done to evaluate all these patients should go immediate post op angiography to look for uh, presence of any uh, active leak extravasation or pseudo aneurysms and uh, if uh, uh, repeat uh, and these angiographies should be repeat after two weeks if study is negative we have not seen any uh, pseudo aneurysms or any uh, uh, evidence of any uh, dissection uh, then uh, injured in artery because it is reported in the literature uh, these aneurysm may develop two to three weeks to develop in the, these pseudo aneurysms so a repeat angiograph after two weeks is necessary and dsa is the most sensitive in- investigation it should be done immediately after whenever we are suspecting this major vessel injury huh. and what to look for the, in this angiography is what we i have already mentioned Uh, ongoing hemorrhage extravasation and we can look for presence of stenosis you know we can, we can pack these uh, uh, cavities tightly or have we have, may have to apply to clip or suture this can cause the stenosis of these vessel so we can get an idea about what we have done during control of bleeding we can, uh, so we can diagnose pseudo aneurysms and thrombosis you know we can you know due to uh, hemostasis uh, during hemostasis we can you know uh, during packing Uh, this intima of this vessel can injured bleeding with thrombosis so we have to deal with this post operatively so all these findings are very you know to look for in this angiogram mm-hmm. and management strategy of these pseudo aneurysms is always like like location of aneurysm where is aneurysm whether is intradural or extradural intradurally it is subic nerve space or uh, in, in a bony canal so we can take that appropriate step and uh, to manage these patients and morphology aneurysms you know whether this is so, uh, narrow neck and uh, wide neck aneurysm dissecting aneurysms or so morphology you know helps in the knowing a morphology helps all management of these aneurysms and cross flow and collateral circulation this is can change your decision uh, in management of these patients management like simple aneurysms can be surgical or endovascular surgical management of these conditions are very daunting okay except trapping of uh, parent artery occlusion we don't have any experience in like clipping of these aneurysm or uh, trapping of bypass so in c- cases of uh, d- cross flow or uh, in adequate cross flow uh, we have trapped uh, uh, parent artery in two cases but clipping and and uh, uh, maybe very difficult in these cases endovascular coiling stent such a coiling parent vessel occlusion are a good option for these patients we can be done in the immediate post operatively and like we have managed five patient conservatively where the parent artery are always occluded already occluded uh, these patient can be followed up in, with antiplatelet drugs and this is the review of literature of iatrogenic pseudo aneurysms these are reported in case reports or case releases the uh, three study has shown more than two cases in these patients in, in uh, uh, having pseudo aneurysm mostly like our study these patients are mostly of, of pseudo aneurysms in, uh, in trans- after transpenoidal surgery or uh, skull base surgeries or any uh, cvg and uh, uh, insertion tracheostomy so mostly these patients are developed uh, injuries which happened during uh, cross uh, during skull base surgeries or minimal invasive surgery and pathology also also determining factor like simple pituitary adenoma these injuries may come may uh, occur very less but as pathology changes towards chondroid tumor chordoma or cavernous anal lesion and surgeons are more frequently doing these patients maybe on uh, minimal invasive or if over in that case open surgeries also and so in these patients the uh, risk of these major vessel injury are more 
and uh, or uh, likely in pseudo aneurysms also which can be seen coming from uh, out from this literature also so this is in this paper they have uh, from china they have discussed the modified endovascular treatment protocol iatrogenic ic aneurysms where endoscopic surgery endonasal surgery so they have discussed the similar protocols which i have already uh, almost similar protocols what i have already discussed and uh, what we have uh, uh, gone through this endovascular management of these injuries and pseudo aneurysms is a choice treatment of choice surgical clipping is difficult due to wide neck or no neck of usually in these aneurysms and they have usually a fragile neck <laughs> sorry uh, adhesions and neck and these aneurysms are high rupture rate so uh, intra op rupture ma managing intra op rupture in these aneurysms can be very dangerous <coughs> professor gardner have given uh, their protocol to manage in this paper in pro their protocol to manage the uh, carotid injury during endovascular in endonasal uh, skull base surgery they have typically managed managed how they have managed uh, these uh, uh, injuries and <coughs> management of the pseudo aneurysms including they have already uh, most of these they also also gone the endovascular management this this is our algorithm what we have uh, made after uh, going through our uh, experience whenever a when injury happen first thing is to control bleeding by packing or any uh, other, other methods after that we shift these patient immediately to the angio suits so in an angio suit if we found have pseudo aneurysm we can we can have idea of cro uh, cross circulation dominant preoperatively or we can get it during this angio <coughs> and depending on uh, cross circulation is there or not we can make, take the, our decision if pseudo aneurysm uh, is present we can have this patient can go under stent uh, assisted coiling or flow diverter flu <coughs> immediately in the situation of good good cross flow circulation we can consider this patient for parent vessel occlusion also if active, active extravasation is present the flow diverter there is a stent graft placement is, is a option <coughs> if there is no flow in vessel but there is no vascular injury noted these uh, patients should uh, repeat angiograph after two weeks i this is just food for thought like uh, what i gone through most most of time we dissect these uh, arteries from uh, various tumors during skull base surgery and handling on weakening of these aneurysms uh, no, arteries may occur during these uh, uh, compressions or uh, dissection so just a food for thought should these tumor patients should undergo follow up uh, angiogram for look for these aneurysms in which the vessel wall has already <coughs> weakened or uh, uh, adhered with this tumor this is food for thought i do not found any literature regarding this scarred arteries this is our experience what we have published in neurology india of these major vessel injury and pseudo aneurysms to conclude the iatrogen aneurysm is a devastating complication in neurosurgery prevention is the best strategy for this condition because once developed their management is very complex preoperative assessment of vascular anatomy where major vessel uh, vessels are deemed at risk is necessary obvious excision of tumor should be avoided whenever major vessel is involved any major vessel injury should be followed by immediate angiography and sub subsequent early management of pseudo aneurysm if present any you know, uh, over experience endovascular management is more favorable option thank you and i would for is forum i would like to invite to lucknow for our annual skill based conference which is going to happen in october 2023 please block your date and uh, you are welcome in lucknow for this uh, meeting for theme for this meeting is making skull base surgery safer so that we can avoid this type of complication in our daily practice thank you yes, thank you professor for your excellent presentation um i have two question for you um first of all um what is your long term follow up plan on different option of the treatment and the second um on as the view of the intervention specialist um what do you think the role of the bypass surgery for this kind of um, injury so 
ஆப்டர்மேனேஜிங்ல in time they don't have any problem uh, in our patient they don't have any problem in follow up will you do angiogram every year something like that follow yeah. up with the angiogram or just mra now uh, uh, in our we have made protocol so after two week follow up angio we are doing uh, nowadays we are doing uh, what six months uh, six monthly for uh, angiogram for, for first two years if there is no problem then we can you know these patient can have Uh, angiography you know uh, la- later also for, 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 for next two years we are doing six monthly uh, angiography for this patient and mostly this angiography are dsa not ct angio um and the second question um when when will when will see that the bypass will be the option of one of the rescue method bypass uh, surgery now why the, it's, it's all all in thought thought process you know whenever injury happens so your first choice is to solve as a patient you know so if you are doing the subsequent uh, angiograph uh, angiography of this patient this patient are already going as angio suit in having uh, going dsa immediately follow up and we are following uh, what, what we have done most of procedure immediate follow up we, we don't have delayed aneurysms so if a uh, delayed pseudo aneurysms is coming in, like in uh, paracranial aneurysms so Uh, uh, we can think of bypass but we know experience most of these aneurysm are managed immediately post post operatively in angio suit so in that cases i don't think so we should consider this patient for bypass or any other procedures because if we are getting dsa and, and your endovascular guy is confident enough to manage the, uh, those injuries or aneurysm uh, uh, immediately post operatively so we are doing mostly uh, uh, in the endovascular management of these an- an- injuries or aneurysms Thank you for your question. Is there any common or question from Yes, from I would like to audience? ask uh, Kamlesh. Uh, first of all, congratulations for this wonderful series. I wonder if there is any bigger series than this. This is perhaps the largest series, is it? I think so. Jo, I have literature what I have shown in, in one of our studies, these are 21 cases. You know, we have 21 only... cases, 15, right. fine so one particular uh, specific question i would like to ask is one interesting case you showed about c2 screws while putting uh, you had an injury so uh, was it discovered intraoperatively due to the torrential bleeding and what did you do with this screw did you still insert it or take it out no you can uh, screw you know sometimes if it happening during screw, screw insertion you can go you know with your screw the damage is already done if we, inside a bony canal we can uh, we usually uh, go for uh, screw insertion complete screw, screw, screw insertion you know so if it is last screw we can put that screw because the injury is already happened if you are not able to localize that uh, that artery arterial rent during that uh, that surgery so, but uh, would it interfere with your subsequent uh, management endovascularly if the screw is through and through and you are not able to place a stent or would it in some way hinder your subsequent management yeah but in these uh, cases in one cases we are going for c1 c2 screw during uh, which the injury was happened in that case we have changed our plan we have gone for occipital cervical fusion you know after controlling the bleeding we pack that and uh, area and we change our, our one our plan for c1 c2 screw we have done occipital cervical fusion uh, close the patient and patient was taken to endovascular suit in one patient we can do you know have that the uh, c2 screw uh, inserted and then uh, refer the patient maybe that patient was that uh, the dissection patient in that uh, uh, dissection of vertebral artery was happened uh, during that insertion of c2 screw so maybe that that case up uh, exact answer for this question is not with me but our in, whenever injury happens you know surgeon looks loses his cool and calm if he, if he, if he injuring any major vessel so 
what is to, we taught in basic teaching we should complete that screw then we can think of you know later things if that screw uh, sometimes the putting that screw can control your bleeding especially in case of vertebral artery you know there are two vertebral artery and yes you know, yes uh, you are absolutely right because uh, we do not have that composure we lose the, our composure during such complications nevertheless congratulations again uh, ben has joined us from hong kong yes ben Yes, and uh, firstly, I would like to uh, thank you, uh, Professor Kimis, for bringing this very important topic. As I was also doing uh, endoscopic, uh, uh, endoscopic surgery as well. That's why uh, I do encounter uh, these uh, rare uh, complications, and uh, uh, either either uh, from my colleagues or or uh, or, um, or from the other experts. And uh, this is very difficult to handle. And and be, uh, before my question, I will also like to thank uh, Professor uh, Jimmy Gao for joining to us and your uh, very excellent introduction of this topic. And I, I would like to echo uh, with um, uh, Professor uh, Jimmy Gao and also uh, Raja about those um, difficult uh, situations where uh, endovascular uh, treatment uh, may, might not be possible. And uh, because I do encounter cases that uh, uh, the injury was so severe that, um, uh, for example, the ICA or the vertebral artery need to be trapped in order to stop the beatings. And uh, so uh, I, I think that uh, the usual practice is that if there is a arteriogenic injury causing uh, arterial beating, we try to tamponade the breathing and we will try to get the DSA as early as possible after uh, tamponading the beating. And I think this is uh, usual practice, but uh, sometimes uh, it's difficult to uh, treat uh, by putting a stand or we need to force to trap the, 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 the artery. I think that's why Professor uh, Jimmy Gao mentioned about the role of the bypass. I think um, Yes, I, I, I don't have an answer for this, and uh, I just want to uh, ask a panel for the discussion about how, how to, uh, about those uh, severely uh, injured uh, vessels, uh, what, what can we do for it? Well, I would just say one word, anything that you do to save the patient would be the right thing. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would be the answer. Yes, yes, Dr. Mohan has raised his hand. Yes, please. Yes, yes. Dr. Kamlesh, Dr. Mohan Sashank here. Uh, I met you in uh, NSAIC on Hyderabad uh, last time, actually, in the early years. Uh, congratulations for the excellent presentation. But uh, uh, I have one doubt, actually. Uh, we have one of your slides uh, showed uh, uh, that uh, 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 whenever there is a uh, active extravasation from the vertebral artery injury in case of a C1, C2 screw placement or a cervical fixation case. So uh, do we, uh, after packing it immediately, do you still consider a flow diverter or stunt placement or rather uh, you try to uh, prepare for a coil because uh, we have uh, a couple of cases like that, uh, uh, which uh, we have overcome with a kind of pseudo aneurysm and got out with a coil, uh, simple uh, uh, bare platinum coils, a couple of coils or three, but uh, a stunt or a flow diverter in an active extravasation, does it really work? I just wanted to share, know your experience. Yeah. So first of all, like, <laughs> I'm not an endovascular expert. I'm mean, the yeah. learning endovascular, but I'm not in the position to give expert advice regarding mm -hmm. endovascular medicine. I can share my our experience. You know? So most of these pseudo aneurysms say, you know, wall wall is not so uh, wall is only clot. That, yes. That's why we call pseudo aneurysms. Yes. If you put coil in that uh, clot wall, I don't think so. What is going to happen? So yes. the wall may not support only the coils uh, in that pseudo aneurysms. So yeah. what our endovascular expert is more prominent of stunts, you know, uh, covering that, uh, excluding the aneurysms. With, may, they may put some coils in that uh, pseudo aneurysm, but they are not totally depending on that coils or not. They are also putting stents on their perineal artery. So it okay. is my experience. So okay. and logical also, I think so. 
Yeah, yeah, logical. But uh, generally, there is no problem if there is a uh, non-dominant vertebral artery. We have uh, standardized our protocols nowadays in the case of cervical case, especially in a C C1, C2 junction or a CV junction fixation. We generally consider a preoperative diagnostic angiography to confirm the dominance of the vertebral artery and make sure we point and label it and we make sure that uh, the non-dominant side and dominant side are prior uh, categorized. And uh, if it is a non-dominant side, uh, we don't bother it to uh, uh, put a, uh, a non-dominant vertebral artery is injured. We don't, uh, we just put, uh, continue with our screwing and just confirm the post-operative diagnostic angiography. If it is on the dominant side, some kind of pseudo injurism is always there most of the times because by the time we shifted to the DSA shoot and uh, uh, the angio shoot, some kind of pseudo injurism is there and it gets away generally with a few coils. Um, a flow diverter uh, assisted with or without stunt, uh, generally uh, without stunt initially because already there is some kind of uh, bleed that is going on and stunt might promote it because we need to put as antiplatelets for the stunt. So that is the main reason we just put a couple of coils and then uh, we try to see and follow it up after six or eight hours with a repeat uh, angiogram. If everything is fine, we put it off. The same way in the case of paraclinoid aneurysms also. Paraclinoid pseudoaneurysms also, we try to initially address them with few coils. In case if it is not happening, maybe we can take an assistant uh, assistance of the stunt in the later period. That was our, just to share my experience. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was a great learning. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I think we can close this session. We'll go back to our chair to hear his concluding remarks. Jimmy Ming Chuang. Please uh, unmute your mic, Professor. Um, thank you for you all. This is a very good discussion for this very important topic. I believe this topic will be more and more important and show more and more literature um, in, in, in the journal. And I congratulate again for the Professor Basara. Uh, there's very impressive um, data for us, and we all learn a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. It was an well, uh, honor to uh, represent our department at this forum. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. It was indeed uh, one, both the lectures were so much contributing towards learning of the young neurosurgeons, and we're extremely grateful. And now I will wind this up officially on behalf of the Education Committee of the ACNS and the President, Professor Yoko Kato. I would like to thank both the speakers of today, Professor Guan Cheng and Dr. Kamlis Baisora, as well as the chairs, Professor Shigeru Miyachi and Professor Jimmy Ming Cheng Chuang, for the time and support for the ACNS webinars. And also, special thanks to our uh, mentor, Professor Shubin, who is the Vice President of the ACNS, for uh, broadcasting this webinar on the WeChat channel. And as I said earlier, there are over uh, for 490 people who have joined us from across the globe. A special thanks to my co-host Dr. Liu Bun Seng as well as Ben from Hong Kong who is joining me today. So until we meet again next Saturday, it is bye-bye from all of us. Thank you very much for joining. Thank you.